You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building from the Real Housewives of Potomac, Karen Huger. Hey, Hello, good welcome, morning, everybody. Welcome. I smell money. Oh, do ya? I know you got it. <laughs> Can I have some? <laughs> <laughs> well, Karen, we've been watching your journey on the show. Yeah. And there's a lot going on right now. First of all, condolences to you because I know your your father passed away recently. Yeah, we just buried my father Thursday. But Sorry to hear that. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Right. And um, I was watching because I know Alzheimer's and research for that is something that's very near and dear to your heart. It is, and um, bear along with me because this is new to me, but you know, and recent for me. But my father was a big bear of a man, so I'm gonna walk through this and do this thing today. Um, he did die a full blown um, Alzheimer's, so I saw the whole process. Mm -hmm. My brother, sister, and I, we need to find a cure. Mm -hmm. It ain't right. Okay, so thank you for mentioning that. Mm -hmm. And we are still reach out to Alzheimer's organization and make a donation. Mr. Yeah, a lot of times people can't tell if you have dementia, if you're it's suffering from confusing. Alzheimer's. So What's the difference? It really, to me, it's very confusing. It's not a difference, if you ask me. It's, mm -hmm. it's just a slower, one slower than the other. The outcome is you lose a loved one. Mm -hmm. You know, you lose, but you still have them. Mm. Physically. Right. But mentally, you lose them. Now, my mother, by the way, I would like to clear that up. Mom didn't die of Alzheimer's. She had other ailments that took her away from us, which was a blood infection in the end. So she was a bear, too. So, But my father did. And so I'm grateful to have been there for them. But we certainly need to find a cure for this dreaded disease. Now you said he, he died of it. I'm, I'm, <clears throat> Go ahead. I'm questioning because my, my, my mother in law has dementia. So, I mean, she's, she doesn't die from dementia. She dies from whatever. But she just. Right. OK. All right. Because you, know, you said die from Alzheimer's. I'm like, well. No, no, no. The disease, Alzheimer's, actually, if you want to go there. Uh, no, I'm just curious. I no, no, no. The whole process with my father, you forget to swallow. You mm. forget to eat. You forget everything. Every now and then with an Alzheimer's patient, you can see that they, in, the, in their eyes, know who you are. But that's about it. And so mm. you jump through that window with full-blown mm -hmm. Alzheimer's. You jump through that window whenever you can. So most Alzheimer's uh, patients die of malnutrition mm. they die of heart failure mm. they die basically of starvation because gotcha. they don't know how to take in food mm. it's a difficult disease um because you watch somebody kind of you know deteriorate in front of you and yeah. then it's also hard for people around because you can't leave somebody by themselves you know? never not at all never ever i mean my father and i my, i have to thank my sister who was the primary caregiver she was there 24-7. Her name is Bridget. Shout out to Bridget. Um, she kept us job. together. Mm -hmm. It was a full-time job, and she dedicated herself to that. And for that reason, I'm able to do what I do, and my brother's able to do what he does. But we all, in the end, teamed up. Mm -hmm. Doctor's appointment. It's around the clock. Mm -hmm. um, they need 24-7 care. Mm -hmm. And there aren't many facilities in this country that actually cater to Alzheimer's or dementia patients mm -hmm. when they're transitioning. Mm -hmm. They just slap you in a nursing home and call it a day. And they're not trained to meet the needs of an Alzheimer's patient. And I would also say dementia either. Do, do, do they know where, where it came from or how it started? Do they have any clue? You know what? They're doing research now and they're figuring out what we can do to slow it down. But this is the thing. There is no cure. You know, is there a gene? Um, I would say yes, there is a gene, but I don't want to overspeak. Uh, I'm not a doctor. I'm a daughter who lost her father. Right. I'm a daughter who lost her mother to both. One, mm -hmm. you know, it's just it's just too hard. It's just because you know with, with, with my mother-in-law, it was uh, she had surgery, right. and when they put her under, and when she came back, I don't know was if it was maybe it, she was under too long. They you know something with the oxygen, and from there that's when it started. So. It, I'm real funny with surgeries now when they have to put you under you because it's, be. it's very, very nervous. It's As very, you very... Should, should be. Um, I'm very uh, hesitant, even though the girls say I get tweaked quite quite a bit. This mm -hmm. is all natural. <laughs> <laughs> I made sure that I took out Tiff and Fee. You know, as I saw, <laughs> you don't follow the story, but mm -hmm. on that one, uh, Tiff and Fee is Tiff and Fee. I mm -hmm. named them. And, oh! Right. Yeah. So <laughs> for me, it was important to remove those things from my body um, when I saw my parents' health going down because you don't really know what happens when you go under. Mm -hmm. And so selective surgery for me is now something I really pause on. There's so many things we can do 
to help us out. So you took your boobs boobs out because was it a, a back thing or you just didn't want it to be all natural? Actually, I went on this health journey because my parents did get sick and I started just working out, mm-hmm. losing weight, staying positive. Um, and I just, and actually they were too big for me once I lost weight. So I looked a little bit odd because they were here and I was no longer in need of that size. Gotcha. So there is a way to prevent all time basically. I don't think there is yet. Gotcha. I don't believe there is. I I would like to tell you yes. I don't think there is because we haven't. This is the problem. Sound the horn. I love it that you're talking about it. We need more money for research. We really don't know this dreaded disease at mm-hmm. all, and it's taking our loved ones. And a lot of people have this disease, and yeah. they're living in silence because they're ashamed because there is no help. So no, there is no cure yet. Mm-hmm. I do. I think there can be. God, yes, I hope there will be because I don't want another person to go through this. Now, you hosted an event on the show yes. to raise money for Alzheimer's, and things went a little left because the girls <laughs> were talking about where was the money really going. They didn't believe the right. money was really going to the foundation. They were making their checks out to you. Now, how do you respond to that? I respond openly and honestly. I teamed up with Alzheimer's Association. The members were there. Uh they advised me because I did not have a 501c what I needed to do. You walk hand in hand with an organization that, by the way, will help us find a cure. Okay. So that is what I decided to do personally. So I did share with the girls, and you know, it, I, it's my story, but I was shocked to see them behind the scenes saying what they said. This is a serious disease. I understand you have to come for me, but don't come for a charity event that is trying to find a cure. So their questions were valid. Mm. Let's say that. Their questions were valid, but if you pull up the invitation, which I'll hold off on printing, uh, making public, because you gotta go with the Mm -hmm. storyline, it clearly said, your tickets, by the way, are purchasing your food, your entertainment, and your liquor. Okay, that's so that's what is paid. That's what that paid for. That was a ticket price for entry. However, the donation envelopes for the tax deductible donation were there from Alzheimer's Association. Had they stayed around, my girls would have found Ah. that out. But, you know, I seem to just ruffle their feathers because to me, especially with Alzheimer's, I'll own it. I'm very defensive. I'm very protective. I'm not going to allow you to defame that. So it really didn't matter to me what they said or how they reacted. And sometimes that's not fair. I hear you. But I was in the moment, if you can imagine, in, the, in that moment, my mother was still alive. Now, my mother died two weeks after we wrapped up that season, okay? Mm-hmm. She died Thanksgiving morning at 2.30 in the morning. I had been going in and out from my Richmond, Virginia to my home back and forth weekly and so I'm lu- you guys are lucky that I'm on there this season because I was back and forth but I do understand the girls questions mm-hmm. but I did answer them and they had it in print so for me right that was not necessary you do have a lot going on personally you're also going through some financial issues well your husband. Well, yeah, let, let's own that. That's both, right? Let's yeah, 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 well, no, uh, you let's like talk about it. Married for over 20 that years. their finances 20, going are going on separate. 22. Right. 22. Yeah. Their finances his are... is yours. Yours is his. No, no, I know no, you're no. Gonna go. My son told me what you're going to do. So he said, Mama, I need you to understand. And I appreciate that. That so, was a topic go, we had on the show. So go ahead. Let's talk about it. Your finances are separate. So it you, is. So Thank you don't know what's going on with his finances. Things are, he doesn't know what's going on with yours. They're separate. So explain to me. Y'all okay. been separate for 20 years? Finances? Did you want me to spend your money? Would you give me your checkbook? My wife got my checkbook. Woo! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was, you know, when I married Ray, let's mm-hmm. let's back it up so okay. we can give foundation. Right. I'm 17 years younger than Ray. I probably was very, the most irresponsible financial young wife to him, you know. So mm-hmm. I would just write checks and not balance it. But I'm a grown woman now. Mm-hmm. That's a decision we made to keep things separate. And that's us. I don't recommend it for everybody. It worked for us. Oh, so he was older than you. So he was younger. You were younger. No, you really yes. weren't experienced with the money. No, you I was. Hot, I was happy with his you money. Were the, but I, you were the hot I, young mama. He, I he was. And I still am in his world. Right, so, absolutely. you know, hence the attitude and the confidence. My man gives me that confidence. So, right. um, but I own that. I don't say every marriage should do that, but it was it was right for us. And that's a personal decision a husband and wife have to make. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just so turns out I do have my own. And I heard Giselle say, well, no, nah, she don't have it. Giselle don't know what's in my checking account. I like Giselle, too, though. By the way, she's just a nerd. Sometimes she gets on my nerves. Um, but anyway, I hope I'm answering your question. Mm-hmm. And it works for us. 
And, you know, it did give me that opportunity. Let me speak to the sisters out there who are fortunate to marry a man like my husband. The Black Bill Gates. His name is Raymond Huger. He hates being called the Black Bill Gates. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm proud of him. I'm, I'm, I still am extremely proud of him, even with his financial challenges, because I know this man to be an honest, good man. Yeah, they say y'all owe millions in back taxes. Well, you know. He, she said. <laughs> let's be clear. Don't be. Listen, I will say this. It is a business issue, okay? That, by the way, he did say this. It transferred half of it to him. So that's where you get the number from. But the $5 million is inaccurate from what he tells me. I can speak to that now. However, the most important thing is that the 21 years of marriage allowed me to accumulate my wealth. He taught me what to do, and I'm grateful for that. So when it was my time to soldier up and have my niggas back, it was no question what I was going to do with my money. Now, by the way, I wish I had known sooner mm -hmm. because maybe I would have done some things differently. But that's incumbent upon me as a wife to him today. We made it through this. This is in our rearview mirror. So when did you find out? Did you find out? I found out when media? you all found out. Really? And I think that's a little crazy. You know what? Because I, I can understand. You need it. a heads up, though. Before, you shouldn't find I mean, out when I everyone else. I think the question else... you should ask me was, how did I feel when I found out with everybody else? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I had to sit with that. I even got counseling. And I'll tell you, I was offended. Right. I was offended. And that's all it was, though. Did it make me want to leave him? I didn't know how to help him. I didn't know what to do. Um, and my mama checked me. And she, she said, you know what to do. You need to do what I taught you to do. I want you to pull out all your papers, go to your checking account, and pull out your keys, and look what you can do to help this man. He's been good to you. And so all I could do was lift it off of him, meaning my daughter is in school. Mm -hmm. You know, if I needed to do the mortgage, let me do the mortgage. That's what a soldier for her man does. So mm. I stayed out of his way because he simply told me stay out of his way. Mm. He he was focusing on finding a solution. Right. And that's what he would do. And so in his words, I can say this. At the end of the day, it's a bill. It has to be paid. And he's made those arrangements. And I'm proud of it. It can happen to anybody. It can happen. Sure yeah. And yeah. it is yeah. happening to everybody. Yeah. But moving yeah. forward, would you tell him, listen, when something happens financially that's stressful to you, I would love to be there to help you and know about it. And, you know, I have before. done that. I have done that. It actually, you know, what don't break you, make you. Mm -hmm. And you never think your marriage can get better. I always knew he was a good man, but was I a good wife in that respect? I had to look at myself. And so, yeah, I have had that conversation with him. And it actually drew us closer, which is probably irritating the girls, too, because some women would just say, pack their bags and go. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what can I do to help? Because not only did Ray help me become the woman I am, he helped my folks. So I can but you, relate. But you understand it, though. You know I mean, because the, the bills are divided and he just wanted to handle it. He thought he could handle it on his own. And you know what? And he is honestly he is. still handling it on I his own. It. I can't take any credit for what this man has accomplished in this challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, I prayed for him. I walked with him. I stood with him. But I mean, I'm his woman. I'm not going to turn my back on him. And I can tell you, I was very disappointed when I heard the responses from the girls which it was a coward move to do that from the chair. Talk to my face. Tell me. Now, they were upset because his lawyers told me I couldn't talk. Mm -hmm. And They didn't believe you also. They didn't want to believe me. Girls, a good story. I'm a great story. If you don't have a story, catch on to mine, and you'll stay relative. <laughs> Go ahead. They had actually made some T-shirts. They had a free Big Ben T-shirt. Well, that was Giselle. That? I thought that was classless, and I actually have addressed that because Giselle and I on the show have more history than any of the girls and I know she, I know her to be messy. I know her to twist your truth so that it's comical, but it wasn't funny. I do know her to be a really fun girl. And do I like Giselle? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Is she in timeout? Hell yeah. Now, she's got to earn my trust. Hell yeah. Well, Giselle's been going through some things too. She's, and I think she strikes out she to was deflect. Dating yeah. a, a, a gentleman who. She's dating her friend's ex husband, yes. Right. And you invited um, Kendall. Kendall. He's a ball player, right? What was his name? I can't remember the name. Sherman. Sir, Sir so you, you invited Sherman's ex-wife to an event that Giselle was coming to, and she felt like that was inappropriate and very awkward. I call foul because I'm a, I'm a better friend to Giselle than Giselle is to me. Because what I did was she had already made her T-shirt. Mm -hmm. I have no commitment to Giselle at this point. However, I gave her a heads up. I said, listen, I want you at the charity event, but I'm inviting Kendall. You can't be no more plain than that. There was nothing about um, Kendall being there. Kendall, Giselle, all of us know each other. Mm -hmm. So, 
you know, Giselle singing, well, you don't really hang out with her. You know, I, didn't, I ain't been hanging out with you since you stabbed me in the back either. But I love you, Giselle. I know you do not have any power over my invite list. And so, but I didn't have to do girl code. I gave her a heads but, up. So were Giselle and Kendall really friends or did they just know each other? Because there's a difference. You sound like you want to fight yourself just a little bit. Y'all a little younger, y'all get it in. <gasps> you know what? I'm, no, we, we'll never go to blows. <laughs> okay. We'll never go to blows because I know there's a good person there. Giselle mm-hmm. is a decent person. You just got to dig deep sometimes. And I've been digging <laughs> deep for a while. I do love her. And you don't throw friendships away like that. You put them in timeout. She went too far. Let's be very clear. And I have forgiven her. I just can't forget. And I'm not a phony person. So if I can't forget, and I'm still, like you said, you're catching up on that emotion right mm-hmm. now. You're catching it. Because it's real. Don't come from my man. Well, see, what, yeah. are, what are the rules, though? It's a small town, right? And I said the rules is don't date somebody, your friend's ex-husband. But was that really her friend like that? They were friends. Okay, now now we're getting technical. Were they, were they associates or were, were they friends? Right. Mm-hmm. I considered them friends. Now Giselle says they're not. Now, unlike Giselle, I'm going to go ahead and say, if Giselle says they're not friends, I stand corrected on that. I thought they were. Mm-hmm. Because we all know each other. Right, because it is... Kendall's ex-husband, and they have been yeah. not together for how long? Um, let's see, four years. Four years. Right. So he's fair game. He is fair game, but I would. To... I'm sorry. I have girlfriends that I ride or die with 10, 15, 20 years, and if they divorce their man to date, he would never be on my menu. But if it's not your ride or die friend and just an associate, I still say it's tacky. I say it's wrong. It's you said it yourself. It's a small town. Mm-hmm. Why do it? Now, um, was there a point in time when you and Ray were considering getting divorced or separated? <laughs> Let me tell you, I've been married 21 years, and I shared with Cherise um, that, yeah, the word divorce came up in my marriage. Because I'm sorry, people that have been married for a long time, I, I'm not going to say it happens in every marriage, but it was a heated discussion many, many years ago. Mm-hmm. I, Ray, we, we don't even know the year, but we got mad, girl. We had a moment. I said, well, you don't have to be with me. He said, yeah, we can divorce. And I shared that with Sharice. It turned into Ray wants oh, a divorce. Oh, Ray wants a divorce now. Mm-hmm. Ray moving to Florida without you. Oh, God. That, none of that's true. And, and and so my thing with that is, you know, I know my truth. My man knows my truth. And I think um, I can say this. Y'all want to hear Ray's truth. So we just taped the reunion yesterday. And I learned stuff that he did to me that I didn't know he had done Yikes. because of these rumors. Really? Yes. <laughs> really? Like Y'all what? gotta stay tuned. I that's oh, you a can't say the reunion. I learned stuff about my man, and I knew he was a strong brother, a smart businessman. But you know, he checked this woman on the couch yesterday, and I was like, "All right, this is turning me on." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "Okay, that's that's my boo. Let, let's roll with it, Ray." So we rolled on to the, into dinner, and we rolled on into something else. It, it was good. It was good for the marriage. Now, <laughs> so what about go. the ring when they were saying, "Oh, she's not wearing her ring. You What's know, happening?" That's a good thing. I thought that was a sad, funky attempt to uh, smear my marriage. It was a simple choice. I have been mugged. If you watch the show, um, and <laughs> I've been mugged, and I was able to take my ring off. And I said I put it in my hoo-ha. And the girls are like, Karen, no, the hoo-ha is down here. I call these the hoo <laughs> I slipped the ring in there, but they got the necklace. So when I'm traveling, I will take my ring off, and I'll put it in the safe. Where'd you get robbed? I got robbed in Tyson's Corner, Virginia. Yikes. Really? Yeah. Gun point? You wouldn't think so. No, 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 no. I was walking to the parking lot, and they obviously were watching me, and, you know. You smell like money. No, I, I took a bath. That's her perfume. <laughs> I took a bath. Thank you. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So um, I think that was weak, and they know it was weak. They know it was Did they ever catch the person or no? No. So they just walked up to you and, like, give me the ring? Or... Mm-mm. It was left and right. Pull. And then, you know, I knew what was going on because the guy pulled one arm and the guy went for the necklace. Okay. Yikes. And then I knew I had this puppy on my finger. And I was like, I'm giving y'all my, I'm thinking, I ain't giving you my diamond. I ain't giving you my engagement. The wedding ring, yeah. So, exactly. So I was like, I, I did do that. And, you know, thank God it didn't turn into something that was life threatening for me. And right. they, they ran. But it happened to me. I know my truth, I know my story. So I will always take my ring off when I travel. And that's my choice. Absolutely. And if you watch the film closely, Giselle, Giselle says, oh, she had a ring on just this, when we go on the boat. I love the fact. Sometimes production can be messy, but sometimes <laughs> they work in your favor. Mm-hmm. And she said, no, you just had it on in the van. They zoom back to the van. It ain't there. So I don't know what that's all about. But the point is, I don't wear my ring 
when I travel. Right. That's understandable. You probably yeah. still got trauma. I do. PTSD. I, I don't. I, I, I got it all. Yeah. yeah, I got it all. I'm with you. Then yeah. what about the house? They were saying something about the house. You're renting the house. You don't own a house. Well, what that's, that's true, that? though. Oh. That's true. You know, I, 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 I really was sad that they went in that direction because the girls know my truth. I'll say when I refer to the girls, Cherise and Giselle. Mm-hmm. I'm, I now can say Robin and Ashley because they all knew my parents were sick. So it was time to move on. But timing is a motherfucker, isn't it? Mm. I'm sorry, mm. but it is. So it was time to move on. Of course, we don't need the big house I'm living in, Potomac. So we're going to sell the house. And Ray and I are like, well, I'm like, okay, I can go wherever you want to go. What do you want to do? He wanted a home in Florida, and he wanted one here. Okay, that was our plan, but my parents progressed. So I asked him to look into the house in Great Falls because my parents – all of their benefits, if you understand that, um, were in the state of Virginia. Mm -hmm. So I said, I need to help Bridget. I need to step up as a sister and share this responsibility. Let's have mom and dad move in with us. So we did rent this house, and we st I currently live there mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, with the option to purchase it. Um, but I've since then lost both parents. Do I know what I'm going to do? I'm too numb. Um, but th that's the truth. And the girls knew the truth. So my thing about that is that's sad again. I mean, I think what it is, and I can understand how they feel. I, I became extremely protective of mm -hmm. my mom and dad because I'd seen what they did with Ray's story. There was no way I was going to share my mom and dad with them. So whenever they made accusations about my house or why I did it, I knew that was a lie. So why be concerned with that? Let me walk in my truth, and it will reveal itself. Has anyone me. apologized to you finding out what you've been going through personally behind the scenes that you didn't reveal and said, you know what, I apologize for attacking you in this way or uh, saying certain things about you? You know, I wasn't aware. It's coming. It's mm -hmm. coming. Um, but do I believe it? You, you've broken my trust. You've got to earn my trust back. Um, I've done nothing to these women at all. But, you know, it, it is what it is. I'm funny. I have a lot of personality. I have one hell of a sensational life. And, you know, God only does that to people who can handle it. So I am not upset with them to that degree that we can't make it through this. You understand what I'm saying? I don't think I require words at this point from these girls and some of them have made attempts to say i'm sorry however i want to see action mm -hmm. and that's the only thing that's going to make that right what do you think about ashley's growth on the show since when she first moved into town and you guys yeah. met her you know and where she is now i think she's done a hell of a lot of growing um she's going through a lot mm -hmm. i think she's messy as hell <laughs> And that's the truth, and she knows it. And we all voted her the messiest person on the show, but she's a bright girl, and I wish her so much happiness. You know, it, but she's got to get on with getting on with Ashley. Mm -hmm. You understand? Don't be so concerned about everybody else because her plate is full. Yeah. You know, I would think, you know, especially after losing my mom, and I said this to Ashley, you know, focus on your mother because you only get one. And when mm -hmm. that day is done, it's done. You can't go back and get that back. What about you? Do you think there's any truth to what her husband says about her mom interfering? It kind of ruins their relationship because she does so much for her mom. And he feels I, like you her know, mom doesn't reciprocate that. Or do you think he's using that as an excuse? I think Michael uses a lot of things as an excuse. But I'll say this. Michael did the right thing, helping Ashley's mom initially. I was the one that said, you know, when you've done all you can... You can't ask your man to continue to support, and you, you don't see her making progress. However, I do say that the demand to end her relationship with her mother was beyond. You end your relationship with your mother. Yeah, that was like ungodly, and I just don't relate to that. And I look, I, I've been married twice. You can get rid of a husband and get a new one. You can't get a new mama. You think it's a deal breaker that she wants to have a baby and he doesn't? It could be. It could be. Um, they have to discuss that. Michael has grown kids, though. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. We'll see. I know Ashley really, Ashley was very honest. She wanted, she wants to be a mom. And she deserves to be a mom. I think she'd be a great mom mm -hmm. if she gets now, away from Michael. How are you handling wig malfunctions nowadays? How, what, do you, how, what do you think? I think it looks nice. I, you, actually, I, I, <laughs> I have always loved playing with wigs. Grab it to the wig. I, Grab it to the wig. She had a little wig malfunction on the show. Oh, but, it no, fell it off? A, no, it was a wig shit. <laughs> it was a wig shift. It was like an earthquake. Gotcha. No, you got to lock a bitch down. I mean, <laughs> my shit started to melt in the sun, and I was like, what the hell happened? And I felt the glue moving back, and I was like, oh, my God, let me pull it forward, you know? But I own that. That was yeah, not yeah. the worst wig shift in my lifetime, okay? Right. I have had my wig blow off at a football game. No. I had to pick it up, put it back on, and keep pushing the baby carriage. Yes, I did. 
I don't get embarrassed by that. <laughs> <laughs> but how have, you, you got, how have you learned to hold it down? Uh-huh. You got to learn to hold it down. I actually, you know, have hired a very, very good man. He's called the hair doc. Thank Is you. he here with you now? Uh, he was yesterday okay. <laughs> uh, when we, you know, taped the reunion. He's... And yes, that's how good it is. They ain't moved since yesterday. Got you, got you, got uh, you. Yeah, he, 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 yeah, Stephen hands me. Um, but if you can't afford it, a Stephen, just put some bobby pins on and, and stitch it down. I, you know, if you really have a problem with it flying off, but I don't. I think it adds humor to life. You know, I didn't. It doesn't bother me, mm-hmm. and I own it. I mean, I if you can't laugh at yourself, that shows immaturity. Absolutely, hundred um, percent. When you watch the show, you feel like it's an accurate representation of who you are? I think this season more than not. Mm-hmm. I think because um, first season, you know, uh, I was etiquette, etiquette, etiquette. Right. Um, and I am that too. And this season, I'm like, I ain't taking tea for the fever. I will cuss you out and step off from my man. That's me too. So what it is, it, I have that internal switch. I know how to conduct myself. You know, when I need to be proper and, and what have you and, and conduct myself and, you know, a political format, I can do that. When you come from my man, I can go with you. Mm-hmm. I will go with you, as you have seen. Mm-hmm. Um, however, I do believe that um, this season just rounds me out. And I'm funny. As I have a great sense of humor. Well, I think the women are all pretty funny. We are. Yeah. We, and Robin especially, man. Robin wasn't too happy about, I think, you didn't show up for her event. Yeah, she was still in a certain way. I, you can understand <laughs> yeah. that, though. You can understand that. My thing is, why would I have to lie to Robin, of all people? So, no. Now, what you... <laughs> I sung to Robin. I said, take half of me. Why not take half of me? Y'all never see that one. Mm-hmm. Um, but mm-hmm. it wasn't that serious to me because I do dictate into Siri. I will not be dictating into Siri for the women from now on. But I hate texting, so they may not hear from me on the phone. They, you know, in a text, I may call and say something. Um, but, it, you know, I told her I owned it. She showed it to me. Double book. Mm-hmm. They, they weren't talking to each other. I can't read minds. And I did say yes to Monique and yes to her. So I was Robin gonna... felt like you knew her longer. You guys were better friends. Robin hasn't been a good friend this season. So why would I choose her over Monique? No, Monique has been a soldier for, for me. Mm-hmm. So my solution to that was to offer to go to both. And Robin told me not to come. So y'all saw that. It was, it was Karen's not coming. And I didn't say that. She told me that. So you have to respect the host. She was the hostess. She made the decision. Mm-hmm. Live with it. All right. Well, all right. Or else you might get kicked more. out of the party. <laughs> Real Housewives of Potomac. You guys are doing a reunion tomorrow. You taped it already? We taped the reunion already. Nobody fought, though. No fighting, right? Well, they were fighting on my fragrance. They want Tom fragrance. Oh, yeah. She has her own fragrance. You know, they were like, like, oh, is, that like you, is that what you're Is that what you wearing? Is that it? I see. <laughs> you got to stay around. You'll see. <laughs> well, we As appreciate well. you for joining Thank us. You Thank you for coming. Is Thank there definitely you. a new season coming? Uh, you know, stay tuned. You'll find out. All right. All right. Karen Huger is Real Housewives of Potomac. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning.